are Delta 3D printers even still relevant today? That's the first question that popped into my head when FL Sun reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out their new T1 3D printer. FL Sun is really the only big name left in the industry that is still making Delta 3D printers, and I wanted to know why. If you don't know, a Delta 3D printer is a type of 3D printer that takes advantage of a three-armed parallel robot kinematic system. It is just one of many different kinematic systems that work for 3D printing, with the most obvious being the standard rectilinear layout. Before we proceed, I need to talk for a moment about terminology. When I wrote my first book on 3D printing a decade ago, I referred to that as a Cartesian layout. That's a reference to the Cartesian coordinate system in geometry that we all know and love. That term made sense because the rails and motor belt paths physically matched the Cartesian axes. However, many in the industry now use the word Cartesian to refer to any 3D printer using software that relies on a Cartesian coordinate system. That's any printer with software that natively understands a command like move negative 10 millimeters in the x-axis. That's basically all of them, with the notable exception of polar 3D printers. To avoid confusion, I'm going to use this newer terminology and refer to the conventional 3D printer designs as rectilinear. A basic rectilinear 3D printer simply moves the hot end on rigid rails in each axis. If the printer needs to move the hot end in the X axis, it only needs to run the X motor and move along the X rail. Most 3D printers, especially in the early days, use that layout because it's simple, easy to conceptualize, takes advantage of standardized components, and doesn't require any complex math when programming motion. The rectilinear layout is still very popular today and used in models like the new Prusa MK4S, the Bamboo Lab A1, the Lulzbat Taz line, and many others. But there isn't any reason that a 3D printer has to use a rectilinear kinematic system. The only real requirement for an FFF 3D printer is that it moves the hot end in all three axes while keeping perpendicular to the bed. Even that second bit is more of a suggestion than a rule. As such, the possibilities are almost endless. You can attach an extruder and hot end to a robot arm, including articulated robots, SCAR robots, and other configurations. You can get exotic with something like a polar 3D printer. And you can even be a little weirdo and build an HBOT design if you're bored and like experimenting. Delta 3D printers used to be one of the most popular alternatives to the traditional rectilinear layout. In the mid-2010s, the layout seemed to be gaining serious traction. I'm convinced that only mathematicians know how to actually calculate the relationship between a Delta 3D printer's motor movement and hot end movement, but the basic idea is easy enough to understand. As the name suggests, a Delta 3D printer is a Delta robot with the hot end on a small platform attached to three arms by universal joints. The other ends of those arms attach to universal joints mounted on the vertical rails. Three motors move those ends up and down on the rails, which forces the platform to move closer to or further from that rail, unless all three motors move exactly the same way, in which case the hot end will move straight up or down. If you're a mathematician smart enough to come up with the right algorithms, you can coordinate the dance of those three motors to move the hot end in all three axes within the print volume. The biggest advantage of Delta 3D printers has always been speed. The arms are rigid and the motors don't need much torque, which means they can move very fast. But that brings us to the competition and the whole reason for this video. The most proper alternative to the conventional rectilinear layout today is the Core XY style, which is also very fast. So has Core XY made Delta 3D printers irrelevant? The Core XY kinematic system has rapidly gained popularity over the last few years because it's so speedy. Core XY printers include the Voron Trident and Voron 2.4, the Bamboo Lab X1 and P1 series, the Prusa XL, and many others. Core XY printers are fast because they minimize the amount of weight that flies around at any time the hot end moves in the XY plane. With Core XY kinematics, that is just the weight of the carriage for moves in the X axis and the weight of the carriage plus the rail for moves in the Y axis. The Core XY kinematic system's confusing belt path relocates both X and Y motors 
so their mass is stationary. That's a big deal because moving mass is one of the biggest factors when it comes to 3D printer speed. More mass means more inertia that the motors have to overcome when accelerating or changing direction. The more you can reduce that mass, the faster you can accelerate. You also reduce stress on the 3D printer frame so it can be less rigid and still yield good quality. While many manufacturers like to advertise speed figures, acceleration is actually far more important. It doesn't matter what the top speed is if the printer can't accelerate fast enough to reach that top speed much of the time. That would be like buying a hypercar with a top speed of 250 miles per hour, but with an abysmal acceleration equivalent to a 0 to 60 of like 30 seconds. There wouldn't be a straight road on the planet long enough for you to actually reach the top speed. Even a stock Honda Civic would be faster because it can actually reach its top speed in real world conditions. Core XY printers accelerate at an incredible rate, which means they can reach very fast printing speeds under practical printing conditions. Which, once again, brings us back to the central question. Are Delta 3D printers still relevant with Core XY printers as competition? Let's find out. Just a quick disclaimer, this is not a review of the FL Sun T1. This is also not a sponsored video. FL Sun sent me the T1 free of charge for my testing, but I'm not under any obligation to say nice things. These are my honest thoughts. This just isn't meant to be a full-fledged review. All right, let's get started. Because Delta 3D printers and Core XY 3D printers are all about speed, I obviously needed a way to compare that. I sold my Voron Trident a while back, so I used my Bamboo Lab P1S for these tests. It has been my primary 3D printer since I got it about a year ago. Now, my methodology may upset some, but I think my reasoning is sound. I set both printers to use many of the same settings, layer height and fill density, infill patterns, wall counts, and so on. I also used the same filament in both printers, just regular Sunlu PLA. But I didn't control for every variable because that would defeat the purpose. If I changed every single setting to be exactly the same, then the two printers would print at exactly the same speed, or at least very close to it. The comparison would then come down to evaluating the print quality differences, which would be hard to do with any kind of objectivity. So instead, I used the standard FL Sun profile settings and changed the aforementioned settings on the Bamboo Lab to match. I left the speed settings as is, and therefore these tests are straight races to see which prints faster. For the first race, I printed one of these canister thingies I found on printables. <laughs> I'll put a link to the model in the description. I left the FL Sun on the standard profile, which is the only one built into the slicer. I set the Bamboo Lab to ludicrous mode, which is the fastest setting. That increases the current profile to 166% of the normal speed. In this test, the P1S handily built the T1. took just 3 hours and 24 minutes, while the T1 took 3 hours and 58 minutes. That's a 34 minute difference. But alas, the print quality from the Bamboo Lab was unacceptable in my opinion. While the print did finish, I would consider this bad enough to qualify as a failed print. The T1's print, on the other hand, looked just about perfect. I think the P1S is simply unable to print this filament at this speed because the flow rate and cooling can't keep up. That might be possible with other filament types better suited to high speed, high flow printing. But remember, the T1 printed the same filament without any trouble. Because the print was unacceptable, I had to repeat the test with the P1S in sport mode instead of ludicrous mode. Right off the bat, the T1's print failed because the filament broke for some reason. However, it was printing with the exact same settings as the first race, and so we know how long it would take. 3 hours and 58 minutes. The P1S, on the other hand, took 4 hours and 40 minutes in sport mode. It was the T1's turn to gloat. For the final race, I chose a different model, a relatively small part for a robot I'm building. 
I wanted a real-world test and needed those parts anyway. Both printers used the same settings as in the second race with the Bamboo Lab in sport mode. By the way, if you've made it this far into the video, there is a good chance you like my content. If so, maybe consider supporting the channel on Patreon. No hard feelings if you can't afford that. Subscribing, liking, and commenting help a lot too. Thanks. All right, this final race was pretty close with the P1S taking 57 minutes and the T1 edging it out at 54 minutes. I could run these tests for weeks, but that would be boring to watch and I think we've seen enough to answer the question at hand. You can find all kinds of issues with my methodology because it wasn't exactly rigorous, but remember, my goal wasn't to determine which printer is faster or better. My goal was to determine if Delta 3D printers are still relevant today. I think this addresses that question, and the answer seems clear to me. Yes, they are. A good Delta 3D printer like the FL Sun T1 can give a good Core XY printer like the Bamboo Lab P1S a run for its money, and can even beat it in many cases. If speed is your priority, then Delta 3D printers are absolutely still relevant today, but there are other factors to consider. We're past the point where motion was the limiting factor for print speed. Today, flow rate and cooling are the things holding back fast printers. A printer like the FL Sun T1 is liquefying and then mostly resolidifying the filament in just a fraction of a second. That's no small feat. FL Sun says that the T1's hot end can handle up to 90 millimeters cubed per second flow, which is just insane. And the cooling fan is so big and powerful that they had to relocate it to the top of the printer and run a hose to the hot end. That is incredibly loud, which many people won't be willing to deal with, but this CPAP cooler type is popular among people trying to maximize speed. A quick Core XY 3D printer with a similar high flow hot end and powerful cooling fan could probably print just as fast because the acceleration of the motion system is in the same ballpark. With that in mind, we can examine some of the other considerations a buyer might have. The most obvious disadvantage of a Delta 3D printer is the size. The arm geometry requires that the printer be significantly taller than the diameter of the print bed. And yes, I did say diameter. Thanks again to the geometry, Delta 3D printers use circular beds because they can't reach all four corners of a square. In fact, they can't even reach all of a circle. The actual print area is a rounded triangle, similar to the shape of a rotary engine piston. All of that to say, they don't exactly utilize space very efficiently. To get a print area equal to a Core XY, the printer would need to be much larger. In this case, the T1's print area is actually smaller than the P1S's, despite the printer being much larger. Though, in defense of the T1, it does have more room in the Z-axis, 330 millimeters compared to the P1S's 256 millimeters. When it comes to price, these two printers are neck and neck. Both are currently selling for $599, and I think that value is fantastic in both cases. Everything else is just about individual preference. Bamboo Lab has its own proprietary ecosystem that is very easy to use and effective, but that doesn't allow for much tinkering. The FL Sun T1 runs Clipper, which is open source, and the FL Sun Slicer is based on the open source Prusa Slicer, which is based on the open source Slick 3er, so you can modify it to your heart's content. To wrap things up before I accidentally turn this into an actual review, I will reiterate that I think Delta 3D printers are definitely still relevant. At the very least, they can match the speed of Core XY 3D printers and even exceed them under the right conditions. If overall size isn't a big concern for you, then you'll probably want to consider a Delta 3D printer. When it comes to the FL Sun T1 specifically, I really like it. It is incredibly fast and the print quality is quite good. It runs Clipper, which means the world is your oyster. My only complaint about the T1 is the fan noise. It is stupid loud and sitting in the same room while it's running. Will I be switching out my P1S for the T1? No, but that's mostly because I really like the Bamboo Lab AMS. If it weren't for that, I would genuinely consider it. So maybe take a look at Delta models when you're ready for a new 3D printer. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video was helpful to you.